Mr. Clown here for Clown Maths. Today we're going to be looking at the whole statistics in the National 5 Maths 2023 exams. So that includes standard deviation, interquarter range, comparison statements, and the line of best fit. Here's all the statistical styles here. We need to be able to compare data sets using interquarter range and standard deviation. And we need to be able to draw a line of best fit, which ties into straight line. Looking at meaning standard deviation to start with, SQA National 5 Maths 2014, paper 2, question 4, had this question. A runner has recorded her times in seconds for six different laps of a running track. These are the times. Calculate the mean, show clearly all you're working, then calculate the standard deviation, and then we have to compare a statement. So let's go through it one step at a time. Part one, calculating the mean. So just taking a note of these times. So for calculating the mean, we need to add all the numbers up and then divide by how many we've got. We get 339. So now the mean is equal to 339 divided by how many numbers we had, which was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Fifty-six point five. Part two was calculate the standard deviation. So for standard deviation, usually I go with the formula sheet at the front equals the square root of the sum of x minus x bar squared all over n minus one. Now there's another alternative formula you can use, but I always use this one. So the way this one works is you draw yourself a table. And you call this one x, and then in the middle we get x minus x bar, which comes from the top of the formula, and then x minus x bar all squared. And x is all your data, so we've got 53, 57, 58. And then we've got 60, 55, and 56. And we need the mean, that's why part A calculates the mean. The mean is your x bar, so x bar is 56.5. So in the middle, you do each number take away the mean. And I'll quickly write these down. And then you calculate those answers. So 53 minus 56.5. And don't worry about getting negative answers here, that's completely normal, because in the last column it says to square them, so we're going to square each of these numbers. So we times them by themselves. And then once we've got all our numbers, this symbol here means to add them all up, so we need to add up all our numbers and get a total here, and then that will replace the whole of it top line. So we get 29.5. So that means that our standard deviation equals the square root of 29.5 all divided by, and it says n minus 1, so that's one less than the number of numbers we started with, so we've got 6, so divide by 5, and again this is a calculator job square root, open brackets, 29.5 divided by 5, close brackets, 2.42899 or 2.4 to one decimal place. B says she changes her training routine to improve her consistency. After this change, she records her times for another six laps. The mean is 55, the standard deviation is 3.2. Has she improved her consistency? Well, the mean doesn't affect consistency at all, so we can ignore that. The consistency is all about the standard deviation. Remember, the smaller the standard deviation, the more consistent the results are. So we can say that since 3.2 is less than 2.4, she has not improved her consistency. 
Okay, so all you have to do is basically say that the standard deviation is bigger, so she's not improved her consistency when done there. Okay, now I mean the standard deviation question. This time it was a non calculator for a change, not often this happens, but it was a 2015 paper one question five national five maths exam. The standard deviation of 1222A is equal to root A, calculate the value of A. Well, we just need to work out the standard deviation and, and, and ignore the rest of the question. So start part one, I'm going to work out my mean. I'll use this symbol for the mean. That's 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 8. And that all gets divided by 5 because there's 5 numbers. So being very careful, I've got 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 2 is 5, plus 2 is 8. Start again. So being very careful, I've got 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 2 is 5, plus 2 is 7, plus 8 is 15. So I need to do 15 divided by 5, which is 3, and we've calculated the mean. That gets you a mark. And now we need to work out our standard deviation. So remember, from the start of the exam paper, that's the square root of the sum of x minus x bar squared over n minus 1. All square rooted. Now you should be looking that up at the start of the exam paper. Remember there is an alternative formula, but I always use this one because that tells me my table. I do my x here and then x minus x bar from the top, then x minus x bar again squared, and that is in also in the formula. X is just my numbers, which was 1, 2, 2, 2, 8. In the middle is x minus x bar, so I'm taking away the mean. So I need to take away 3 each time. So 1 minus 3. 2 minus 3, 2 minus 3, 2 minus 3, 8 minus 3. Don't worry about getting negative answers, it's completely normal. 1 minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, and 5. And the last one means to square them, times them by themselves. Ignore the signs when you do that, because when you times a negative by a negative, you get a positive. So I'm just going to do 2 times 2 is 4, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, 5 times 5 is 25. And we get a total at the end, we need to add all these up. So 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So our total is 32. It's our key number because that now is the top of the formula divided by 4 because there was 5 numbers to start with, one less. So we can just straight away write down our standard deviation equals the square root of 32 over 4. Now, looking back at this question, it says it is equal to the square root of a. So that's close enough to the square root of a. But we can simplify 32 divided by 4. 4 eighths is 32. So that means that's the square root of 8. So to answer the question, square root of a, a equals 8 for a mark. And we're done. Now, I mean the standard deviation question, SQA National 5 Maths 2016, paper 2, question 6. Jack called his internet provider on six different occasions to report a connection problem. On each occasion, he noted the length of time so he had to wait. Times and minutes are these. Calculate the mean and standard deviation of these times. And then there's a comparison question, which we'll get to in a moment. So for the mean and standard deviation, the bit I need is just these numbers. To get our mean, well, since we're doing mean and standard deviation, we just jump straight into our table. So remember, it's x, and that's all our numbers. x minus x bar, because remember our standard deviation formula from the start of the exam paper is the square root of the sum of x minus x bar squared over n minus 1. And I always use this one rather than the alternative, but you can. That gives me x minus x bar squared. So there's my table nice and neatly laid out. I'll add up all of these here to get a total and then work out the mean. 78, so that means that my mean is equal to 78 divided by how many numbers I've got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So divided by 6, we get 13. We've worked out our mean, we can underline that. Let's go into our table, so we need to take away 13 in the middle. So that gives me 0, 3, minus 3, 9, minus 8, and minus 1. We then square each of the numbers on the end, so that is still 0, 3 3 is 9, 3 3 is 9, 9 9 is 81, 8 8 is 64, 1 times 1 is 1. So once we've got all those numbers, we just add them all up, 
9 plus 9 plus 81 plus 64 plus 1, and that gives me 164. And that is our key number that we're going to use in the top of our formula, divided by 1 less than the number we've got, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so it's 5. So our standard deviation is equal to the square root of 164 over 5. Square root, open brackets, 164 divided by 5, close brackets, is 5.727, or 5.7 minutes to one decimal place. Technically, in the mean, that would be minutes as well. But most of the time, you won't lose marks for missing that on the mean and standard deviation. Part B says, Sophie called the same internet provider on several occasions to report connection problems. Her mean waiting time is 15 minutes and the standard deviation is 4.3. Make two valid comments. So one comment to, cal to compare the mean and one to compare the standard deviation. Let's start with the mean. Always for mean, you're saying on average. You always say, need to say on average, otherwise you won't get a mark. So on average... And then just compare Sophie's waiting time to the previous person's. So the previous person's was 13 minutes. Sophie's is 15 minutes. So Sophie's waiting time was longer or bigger or greater. Bigger mean means that on average it's bigger. But you need to use the word on average. Okay, let's compare the standard deviation. So there's a mark for the mean, and then to compare the standard deviation, standard deviation is all about consistency or how spread out the data is. So the previous person's standard deviation was 5.7 minutes, and Sophie's standard deviation is 4.3 minutes. It's went down, so Sophie's waiting times, which is what the question's about, are more consistent. So that's all we have to say. Sophie's waiting times... are more consistent. Now, on both of them, I've not actually referred to back to the numbers. It used to be that you had to do that, but now rescue have, have recently not been actually saying you have to do that. But let's just to be on the safe side. On average, Sophie's waiting time was longer because um, 15 is bigger than 13. We could say there, and Sophie's waiting times are more consistent because 4.3 is less than 5.7. Just to be on the safe side. And now I mean the standard deviation question this time in the SQA National 5 Maths 2017 paper 1, question 12. So again, a non-calculator one. Some members are asked to fill in a questionnaire to rate the quality of the service provided. They're asked to rate on a scale of 1 to 6 as shown. Five gym members picked 1, 4, 6, 3, 6. And its simplest form of standard deviation can be written as A root B over 2. Calculate the values of A and B. Do not be worried that we've done that. That means that we're just combining this with thirds. But your step, it's mentioned standard deviation. So again, you're going to calculate standard deviation. So step one is to draw my table. But I get the formula from the start of the exam paper first. The sum of x minus x bar squared over n minus 1. That's a little bit messy. But our table, if you recall, is always the same. x, x minus x bar, and x minus x bar again, squared, all from the top. And we can write down our numbers, 1, 4, 6, 3, 6. 1, 4, 6, 3, and 6. We add them up at the bottom. So be very careful. 6, 7, 8, 9, 15, 19, 20. So our total is 20, which means our mean is 20 divided by 5, which is 4. In the middle, we take away our mean then. So 1 minus 4 minus 3. 4 minus 4 is 0. 6 minus 4 is 2. 3 minus 4 is minus 1. 6 minus 4 is 2 again. And then the last column was square. So that gives me 3 threes is 9. 0 zero is 0. 2 twos is 4. 1 ones is 1. 2 twos is 4. And then we add them all up. 9, 13, 14, 18. There's our key number there. Already we've got a mark for calculating the mean, a mark for getting x minus x bar, and then we get another mark for substituting that into our standard deviation, which is the square root of 18 over 4. One more mark left, just for using thirds. So we have to leave it in the form a root b over 2. So we need to simplify this in some way. 
So we can separate that into two square roots, square root 18 over the square root of 4. I need two numbers at times to get to make 18, one of them a square number, so that's 9 times 2, and the square root of 4 is 2, so that leaves a final answer, square root of 9 is 3, root 2 I can't do anything with, 4 over 2, for our final mark, 3 root 2 over 2. Refer back to my suds and the numeracy unit to get more work on suds. Okay, now I mean the standard deviation question this time. SQA National 5 Maths 2018, paper 2, question 5, a standard one here. A farmer's market took place one weekend. Stallholders recorded the number of customers who visited the stall. The number of customers who visited six stalls on Saturday were these numbers, calculate the mean and standard deviation. And then it goes on to say, on Sunday, they say, and the mean number of customers visiting was... 117, the standard deviation was 6.2. Make two comments again about Saturday and Sunday for the number of customers. So we'll do part A first, then we'll move on to part B. So the mean and standard deviation, using these numbers as our base. So we want x, x minus x bar, x minus x bar squared. And our numbers go down the side. 120, 126, 125. 131, 130, 124. But a form of a standard deviation from the start of the exam paper is the square root of the sum of x minus x bar squared over n minus 1. There is another form of it, I never use it. Calculate a job for the first column, add them all up. 756, so our mean, which we can just write as x bar, we'll write the word mean, is 756 divided by 6, because there's 6 numbers. Using my calculator, that equals 126. So then the middle part is we take away 126 from each of the numbers. So that's minus 6, that's 0, that's minus 1. That is 5, that is minus 4, not just 4, sorry, and that's minus 2. And then the last column was square the numbers. 6, 6 is 36, you get 0, you get 1, 1 is 1. 5 5 is 25, 4 4 is 16, and 2 2 is, is 4. We then add up all of our numbers and write it here as 82 because that's our key number. So now we substitute that into our formula for the standard deviation. So that means our standard deviation equals the square root of 82 divided by 5 because 1 less than the number of numbers. Using brackets, 82 divided by 5. 4.049, or if you want to round, 4.05 would be fine, and that's all the number of customers. So we've got our two answers, and now we need to go and do part B. Part B says the mean number of customers who visit the six stalls on Sunday was 117, and the standard deviation was 6.2. Make two valid comments comparing the number of customers visiting on Saturday and Sunday. So this time, we calculate, we've done the mean and standard deviation, so one comment from the mean, one comment from the standard deviation. So looking at the mean first, our first number we calculated was 126, theirs is 117, so on average the number of customers visiting on Sunday is lower. On average is the word you always need to use, if you don't use on average you don't get a mark. The number of customers visiting on Sunday was lower. That's enough of SQ to get your mark, but I might just write because 117 is less than 126. You could have also said on average the number of customers visit on Saturday was higher because 126 is bigger than 117, whatever way around you prefer. Now comparing the standard deviation. Karen's name is all about consistency. Lower standard deviation, more consistent. So, on Sunday it was 6.2, on Saturday it was 4.05, so that's bigger on Sunday. So I would say the number of customers visiting was less consistent on Sunday because 
6.2 is bigger than the standard deviation angle of 4.05. Or, of course, you could say the number of customers visiting on Saturday was more consistent because 4.05 is less than 6.05. A mean and standard deviation, SQA National 5 Maths 2022, Paper 2, Question 5. A school netball team, ball team recorded a number of setups each player completed in a minute. The numbers for the seven players were this. Calculate a mean and standard deviation, and then there's a comparison question to do at the end, but let's do Part A first. So for Part A, just recall from the front of the exam paper, the standard deviation is the square root of the sum of x minus x bar squared all over n minus 1. Uh, you could use the other formula, but I never do. So I'm just going to draw my table. My table goes x, x minus x bar from the start of the formula, and then x minus x bar again squared. And the goal here, remember, is I put all my x's down the side, I then take away the mean, I then square, and get a final total, which replaces the top of the formula. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate the mean by adding all these up. So let's just get my calculator ready. 182 is our total. So our mean, which we can just say is x bar, is 182 divided by 7, because there's 7 numbers. Which is 26. And we get a mark for calculating the mean. So now in the middle, we take away 26 from each of the numbers. So we get 29 minus 26 is 3, then we get 27, minus 26 is 1, and then minus 2, and then 5, and then minus 4, then minus, minus 7, and then 4 again. Square in each of the numbers, you get 9, you get 1, 2 2s is 4, 5 5s is 25, 4 4s is 16, 7 7s is 49, and 4 4s is 16. 9 1 4, 25, 16, 49, and 16 gives you another mark for getting that column. We then add, add all these up. 120, and that's our key number because now our standard deviation is equal to the square root of 120 divided by 6 because there's 7 numbers, so 1 less is 6. Square root of brackets 120 divided by 6 is 4.47 or 4.5 if you prefer. I'll just leave it as 4.47. And that's just done with the mean and standard deviation. Let's move to part B. So some players in the school's hockey team also recorded a number of sit they completed in a minute. They gave a mean as 29 and standard deviation is 3.2. Make two valid comments comparing the number of sit of the players in the netball and hockey teams. So comparing the mean first, we always have to say on average. So I'm just going to write that down straight away before I have a look. And the netball team's mean was 26. The hockey team is 29. So on average, the... Hockey team completed more sit-ups. In a minute. And we could say because 29 is bigger than 26. So there's a mark there, and then comparing the standard deviation, which is all about consistency. The netball's team was 4.47, and the hockey team's 3.2, which means the hockey team was more consistent because it's a smaller number. So we just say the number of sit-ups was more consistent. for the hockey team. And we could say because 3.2 is less than 4.47. Now be very careful with this one. You have to mention the number of setups for the next for the second standard deviation to get your mark because you need to show that you know what it is you're comparing. Okay. 
in the quarter range, HQ National 5 maths 2017 paper 1 question 2. Just before I go into this, just be aware that past paper questions will often say semi inter quarter range for National 5 because it used to be that, but it changed recently to inter quarter range. So I'm going to work out the inter quarter range even if it says semi inter quarter range, but then give you the final answer for semi as well, which just means half of inter quarter range anyway. Let's get straight into it. The number of calls received by police was recorded over 10 days. The results are shown. Find the semi interquarter range of this data. First thing we need to check is the need data needs to be in order from smallest to biggest. So a little quick check. Smallest all the way up to biggest. So we're happy there. And then for interquarter range, we need the upper quartile and lower quartile. So we need to find the middle first. So let's find the median. So the middle. We count up how many there are to find where the middle is. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If you then add 1, so you can, you can almost say it's going to be about 5, but it's actually going to be 5.5 because I'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, cut 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's going to, the median is going to be here. So there's my median. And there's a number of ways to work these out, but basically you want the middle of these two numbers. One of the quickest ways to do it is add them up and divide by 2. So I'll do 232 plus 247. You can use a calculator for that if you want. 479 and then divide by 2. 479 divided by 2, 39.5. Now technically you don't actually need the median number for this question, but I always work it out anyway because you often need it for other questions. But now we need the middle of the upper and the middle of the lower. So the middle of these numbers is clearly here, so I'll just circle that. That's my upper quartile. And the middle of the lower numbers is here, so that's my lower quartile. So the interquartile range which is what you'd be getting asked to do from this year onward would be the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. So in other words, 250 minus 218 which is 32. But to answer the specific question, because it is a past paper question, it says for semi interquartile range, so the semi interquartile range is equal to 32 divided by 2, which is 16. But just remember, you'll be getting asked to do interquartile range, so just 32. Don't have it. Okay, another interquartile range question, this time at SQA National 5 Maths 2019, paper 1, question 5 says the midday temperatures in Grantford were recorded over a 90 period and they were here. Calculate the median and same at interquarter range. So this one we do have to calculate the median and then we'll have to make two comments about that which we'll get into when we get there. So remember median and same at interquarter range, we need the data to be in order. So let's start with that. I've already put in the data in order for us and we need to find the middle of that. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 9 plus 1 is 10. The median happens at 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's my median right here. And I'll put the answer properly in a minute. Let's use a different colour pen. So the upper quartile is the middle of the upper half, which is this four number, so it's in the middle here. So I'll draw a little line. There's my upper quartile. Well, the middle of seven and nine, no work required there is eight. If you didn't need some work on that, you just do nine plus seven is 16 divided by two. The lower quartile then is the middle of three and four. Well, that's 3.5. Again, if you didn't know that, 3 plus 4 is 7, divided by 2 is 3.5. So we can write that out in ni nice and neatly. Upper quartile is equal to 8. Lower quartile is equal to 3.5. My median was equal to 5. And the question asked us for the semi interquartile range. Now remember, in National 5 from now on, you'll get asked for the interquartile range, but I'll do the same as well. So the interquartile range is just 8 take away 3.5, upper minus lower, 4.5. But to answer the questions for this paper, the semi interquartile range is just half of that. So 4.5 divided by 2, which is 2.25. Let's move on to the comparison statements, which work the same way for interquarter range or for semi interquarter range. Over the same nine period, the midday temperatures in, in dock were also recorded, and the median was 8, and the semi interquarter range was 1.5. Make two valid comments. So, 
this is a bit like when you did standard a uh, standard form median is the same as mean basically you're using on average but for interquartile range that's the same as standard form you're using consistency there so let's start off with median and then consistency so let's take a note of the numbers we need so i'll just take a note of this one and go down below part b on average our median in Grantford was five but in Endock is eight on average the temperature and endock are higher since eight degrees c is bigger than five degrees c the temperatures in endock are more consistent since 1.5 is less than 2.25 so more consistent smaller interquartile range just like standard deviation moving on to line of best fit this is basically a straight line question but it comes in the stats a uh, topic because it uses real world data so it's all just straight line with a little extra bit on let's look at one of the questions 20 14 National 5 Maths, Paper 1, Question 6, had this one. McGregor's Burger sells fast food. The graph shows the relationship between the amount of fat and the number of calories. Fat and calories instead of X and Y, in other words. Part A, find the equation of a line of best fit. Well, it's just the same as straight line. We need a point and we need the gradient. So, let's find the gradient first. Let's see if we're given any points. Way down, right at the bottom, it says point A represents 5 grams of fat and 200 calories. And point B represents 25 grams of fat and 500 calories. So our two points that we've got are 5 and 200 and 25 and 500. So for question A, to get the equation of a line, well, we need the gradient, which remembers y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So x1, y1, x2, y2. That gives me 500 minus 200 on the top, 25 minus 5 on the bottom, non-calculator, so that gives us 300 over 20. Well, that gives us 15 as our gradient. And we've got a mark there for getting 300 over 20 or 15. Part B, next part of the question, I always use Y minus B equals MX minus A. Where A and B is a point, so let's just pick the first point, A and B. You could have picked the other one. Subbing that in, you get Y minus 200 equals 15X minus 5. Tidying that up, so it says Y equals. You've got a mark there for just forgetting this, so you get Y minus 200 equals 15X minus 75. 5 15s. Y equals moving the 200 across 15X plus one two five and usually with a straight line question you'll be done there but this is worth three marks and you get a final mark for swapping the y and x for the proper terms so in this question y is c for calories and x is f for fat so i switch the y for c equals 15 f plus one two five for my final mark let's move on to part b Part B says a super deluxe sandwich contains 40 grams of fat. Use your answer to A to calculate the calories. So we're just substituting 40 in for F. So for part B, F equals 40. So C equals 15 times 40 plus 125. A little bit of work to do 15 times 40. So 15 times 40. You've got 0, 4 5s is 20, 4 1s is 4 5 6. So C equals 600 plus 1 2 5, which is 725 calories. And we're done there. SQA National 5 Maths 2018, paper 1, question 6 for line of best fit. The graph 
the cost of a journey for Tom's taxis depends on the distance travelled. The graph below shows the cost in pounds for P for a journey in Tom taxis in distance D. A is this point and B is this point. Find the equation of the line in terms of P and D. Give your equation in simplest form. So it's always the same straight line. We need gradient, then we need to use a point for y minus b equals m x minus a, and then we swap the y and the x for p, in this case, and d. And then part b, cost of journey of 5 miles, I substitute 5 in and see what I get. So part a, our points are 8 and 14, and 12 and 20. So that's my x1 and y1. And that's my x2 and y2. So my gradient is equal to 20 minus 14, y2 minus y1, over 12 minus 8, x2 minus x1. 20 minus 14 is 6, 12 minus 8 is 4. So you get 6 over 4, and you get a mark for getting that far, but I'm going to simplify that right now to 3 over 2, because you can divide top and bottom by 2. Now we use y minus b equals mx minus a. where A and B is just one of the points, so I'll just pick the first one, A and B, you could pick the other one. So I get Y minus 14 equals 3 over 2, X minus 8. Y minus 14 equals 3 over 2, X. 8 divided by 2 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12. So minus 12. Y equals 3 over 2, X plus 2. And then swapping in our P and D, P was Y axis and D was X axis. So we can write in the end, P equals 3 over 2 times D plus 2. Now notice in this case, usually at this point if I had a fraction, I would times through. But I want to really have P equals to work out the cost. So it's much easier in this case to leave a fraction in. But you might want to take a fraction away and put it back in if you want. Part B says calculate the cost of a journey of 5 miles, so D is 5. So I can just do for part B, D equals 5, so P equals 3 over 2 times 5 plus 2. So that is 15 over 2 plus 2, which is 7.5 plus 2, which is equal to 9.5. So the cost, P equals pound sign £9.50. Don't leave your answer as 9.5, that's not money. So you need to get £9.50. Okay, line of best fit. It's Green National 5 Maths 2019, paper 1, question 6. Had this one. It says, the fuel consumption of a group of cars is recorded and the scatter graph shows the relationship between the fuel consumption, F on the y-axis, kilometers per litre, and the engine size, E, in litres of the cars. The line of best fit is drawn. Find the equation of the line of best fit in terms of F and E. Give you equation in simplest form. And then for part B, engine size 1.1, use your equation to find the kilometers per litre he should expect to get. So part A first, straight, straight line question. We need a, two points to find the gradient, and then y minus b equals mx minus a. Now it's not told us any points here, so we need to go up to the graph and find them ourselves. So you just look for real points on the graph. So don't pick this, that's not on the graph. Don't pick this. Don't pick this that you can't read. Look for one you can read. There's one there, and there's one there. So our first point I'm going to use is this one, and that is looking here 3, 3.54, so it's along 3.5 and up 8. So I can take a note of that here, 3.5 and 8. And similarly, this one here I can see is 1.514. Once you get your two points, you can work out your gradient. So remember, gradient is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'll call that x1 and y1, and this one x2 and y2. So we've got 14 take away on top, over 1.5 minus 3.5. Now I should be expecting a negative answer here, because the, the slope is sloping down the way. So 14 take away is 6, 1.5 minus 3.5 is minus 2 which gives me a gradient of negative 3, 6 divided by negative 2. Then we're going to use y minus b equals mx minus a. So I'll just call one of the points a and b. Let's do this one, but you could use the other one. So y minus b is mx minus a. 
So we've got y minus 8 equals minus 3x minus 3.5. Get a mark for getting that far and then fixing it all up. y minus 8 equals minus 3x. Minus times a minus is a plus. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 1.5 is 10.5. And then that means y equals minus 3x plus 18.5. But we need to swap our axes for f and e. So f equals minus 3e plus 18.5 for our final mark. Part b says usual equation to work out how many kilometres per litre he gets, which is f. And his engine size is 1.1. So for part b... E equals 1.1, so that means that F equals minus 3 times 1.1 plus 18.5. That equals minus 3.3 plus 18.5. And if you can't do that sum, you can just up the side do 18.5 minus 3.3 to get 2. 8 minus 3 is 5 and 1, so you get 15. 0.2 and the units were given to us kilometers per liter kilometers per liter and we're done there for our final mark it's been Claire Maths today we've done the whole of statistics for National 5 Maths 2023 exams I hope you find that useful and I hope you're successful with everything you do take care stay safe and goodbye